Five strange and creepy unsolved mysteries. It's in our nature to find answers so we can make sense of the world around us, but unfortunately, they aren't always easy to find. The cases on this list are examples of just that and will leave you wanting to find the truth. These are five strange and creepy unsolved mysteries. Number five, Lyle Stevick. It was Friday, September 14, 2001, when a man in a gray shirt with a blue plaid top and jeans walked into the Quanlet Inn in Amanda Park, Washington. He wrote down the name Lyle Stevick and paid for a single night stay, but told the receptionist that he might stay for a few more days. He brought no luggage with him. In fact, the only thing he had in hand was a toothbrush and toothpaste. Nothing seemed that unusual with Lyle until a few days later on September 17th when he was found dead inside his hotel room. Police ruled his death a suicide. He was found inside the hotel closet having hanged himself by the neck using his belt and the clothes railing. During the investigation, police found a crumpled note with the word suicide written on it along with $160 and $20 bills with the words scribbled on them for the room. When police traced the address he wrote down upon check-in, it led to a Best Western Hotel in Meridian, Idaho. The hotel said they couldn't remember whether Lyle had been there or not. Police then realized that the name Lyle Stevick may have been an alias, having been borrowed from a character in a Joyce Oates novel titled, You Must Remember This. In it, a character named Lyle Stevick was a furniture owner that contemplated committing suicide by hanging himself from the rafters. Police gathered DNA, dental records, and fingerprints, hoping to identify the man, but he didn't seem to exist. There were no hints in the police database, no passport, and no driver's license. They believed he had come to the area riding on a bus, but none of the bus drivers could remember him. No one reported the man missing, not in the days afterwards and not in the weeks or months that followed. Many speculate that he may have killed himself out of depression or that perhaps he had a terminal disease. However, no signs of the latter were found during post-mortem. As for his origins, investigators think he may have been Canadian or even a non-native English speaker of Hispanic or Native American origin. They passed on his information to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, but it was also a dead end. Today, Lyle Stevick's case still remains a mystery. It's been 17 years since he died and the only movement in the case was in early 2018 when his DNA was positively identified as having links to people from New Mexico and Idaho, but nothing more has been found. Number 4. Ireland's Vanishing Triangle In 1993, 26-year-old Annie McCarrick, a Long Island, New York native, had been living in Dublin, Ireland for some time. On March 26, she was expecting friends over for dinner the next night. She had been seen buying groceries, heading to the bank and post office, and by 9 p.m., a doorman reported seeing her at a popular pub in the area. The next day, when she didn't show up to collect her paycheck or for the arranged dinner with friends, she was reported missing. Her family flew to Ireland to find her, but left six months later with no clues as to where she had gone or what had happened to her. Months later, on July 25, 1993, 39-year-old Eva Brennan disappeared in the foothills close to the Dublin Mountains. She was on her way home from lunch at her parents' house, heading to her own apartment. This case generated controversy, since compared to the Annie McCarrick's investigation, Ava's disappearance was treated with indifference. In fact, it would take months until police took it seriously enough to even collect fingerprints. A third disappearance happened early the next year on January 3, 1994, when 22-year-old Imelda Keenan disappeared after walking along Lamarred Street. This was followed by the disappearance of 21-year-old Josephine Dollard, who was last seen hitchhiking in the area in November of 1995. Several disappearances followed, including that of pregnant Fiona Pender in 1996. Fiona stepped out of her flat for a short time and simply was never seen again. Meanwhile, Ciara Breen, who was 17, strangely disappeared while inside her own bedroom. Her belongings were all in the room, and she was not known to sneak out of the house. She's never been found, and after that, two other women also went missing. 
Because of the close proximity of the missing women, the cases have been dubbed as Ireland's Vanishing Triangle. Some believe the cases may all be related, and that it's the work of a serial killer whose patterns may have escalated or changed over time. Others speculate it's possible that it could be the work of different serial killers operating out of the same area. Police suspected a man named Larry Murphy to be responsible for some of the crimes. He lived in the area of the Triangle and was imprisoned for abducting, repeatedly raping, and attempting to strangle to death a woman in the woods. Two hunters chanced upon him while he was trying to kill that woman and intervened, saving her life. Murphy also has similarities to the person identified to have last been seen with McCarrick at the pub. While he has denied he had anything to do with the vanishing triangle disappearances, curiously, once he was incarcerated, the disappearances stopped. Today, the vanishing triangle remains a frightening mystery for those in Ireland. There's still not a single lead as to what happened to all those women. Number 3. Permian Extinction Known as the Great Dying, the Permian Extinction is considered one of the greatest extinction mysteries of all time. Occurring about 250 million years ago between the Permian period and the beginning of the Triassic, it's one of the most catastrophic extinctions to have occurred on the planet so far. About 90-96% to 96 of the planet's marine life died during this time, and approximately 70% of the land's reptile, amphibian, plant, and insect life was wiped out as well. All of the plant and animal life living today comes from the 4% that survived. Even though the mass death and extinction is known to have occurred, the reason for why it happened and how continues to remain a mystery. During the Permian period, the continents on the planet were formed together to create a supercontinent dubbed as Pangaea. Because of its immense size, the central portion of the landmass was believed to be cool and dry, while the outer regions were warmer and damp. There were two types of animals dominant during this time. The Sauropsids, thought to be the ancestor of birds, dinosaurs, and reptiles, and the Synapsids, thought to be the ancestors of the mammals. The oceans were also filled with diverse creatures. Although it's unsure what kind of life lived in the depths of the great continent, there's no doubt true bony fishes, including sharks and rays, thrived. Despite the abundance of plant and animal species, however, something happened that killed most of them off. One possibility is that it was the explosion of a supervolcano. A large eruption could have covered most of the land with lava, while simultaneously spewing huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, leading to catastrophic global warming. Scientists believe it may have created a warming effect of up to 10 degrees Celsius on land and 8 degrees in water. This might have also caused acid rain to fall on Earth, killing plant life and various animal species while also preventing photosynthesis. If this occurred, it would have affected the food chain and many species simply would have starved to death. Another possible reason the mass extinction happened could be because of a large impact event, much like how a meteor killed the dinosaurs toward the end of the Cretaceous period. It's thought that the extinction happened in two to three pulses, which means several impact events may have transpired during the time. There is evidence of the possibility including large impact craters in Antarctica and Australia, as well as fragments of meteorites. Although there is plenty of speculation and theories, there is no concrete evidence pointing to a singular reason for the terrifying mass event that happened during this time. Scientists are still studying it in hopes of figuring out how we can better understand our current climate and hopefully avoid another mass extinction event from happening ever again. Number 2. Starlight A material known to be so heat-resistant and fireproof that it could withstand 75 Hiroshima bombs. Sounds impossible, right? Well, not if you believe Maurice Ward, the creator of a unique plastic material he called Starlight. Starlight, at its most basic, is a special polymer with extreme insulation properties. It's virtually resistant to even the most intense heat. The product first came into the public eye when it was featured on a 1993 episode of the BBC science and technology show, Tomorrow's World. In it, a raw egg was painted with a thin coating of starlight and then subjected to five minutes of intense heat from a blowtorch. After this, it showed the egg with no scorch marks on it, 
and when it was cracked open, inside it was still raw. Later on, the same material was also tested and placed in a simulated environment that used high-powered energy to mimic the heat equivalent to that of a nuclear blast. Starlight not only survived, but it was undamaged and had only minor scorch marks on its surface. The material is said to bear an energy rating Q value of up to 2,470. To put that in perspective, the space shuttle shields used today only bear a Q value of 1. Hailed as a seemingly impossible material, Starlight gained the attention of countless corporations, including NASA. But for some reason, no one was able to secure a patent or produce the material to be used commercially when it was clear its benefits would have been world-changing. The implication of using Starlight could mean being able to save countless lives in various industries. So if this product is indeed life-changing, then where is it? And how come we're not using it? The unbelievable properties of Starlight is matched by the unique story of its creator. It was invented by an eccentric amateur chemist and hairdresser by the name of Maurice Ward. He ran a family business as a hairdresser, but loved to tinker and dabble in chemistry, creating his own formulas for hair dye, shampoos, and the lot. Ward spent his time in his workshop trying various formulas through trial and error. On August 22, 1985, he saw on the news that a greasebound plane had crashed on a Manchester tarmac, killing all 55 people from the toxic fumes of the burning wreckage. Moved by the tragedy, Ward felt that had the plane used fireproof paneling that didn't create toxic fumes, it would have saved lives. He then became obsessed with this idea and started creating this material. Unlike strict scientists in labs, Ward used materials he had access to mixing them together to see what would stick. He kept experimenting and perfecting the promising formulas before eventually arriving at what would become Starlight. When it began receiving recognition, various agencies including Boeing and NASA as well as military companies were highly interested. Tests were done further to demonstrate the capabilities of the product and it all proved impressive. But the more attention the product received, the more eccentric Ward's demands and actions towards patenting and letting go of the product became. He made it increasingly difficult for companies to negotiate with him, often changing the price of the product drastically without warning. He also refused to patent it for fear companies might steal it. He then declined to send out any samples, thinking that companies would reverse engineer it. Ward's refusals of the offers and other agreements resulted in a breakdown in negotiations with some of the larger companies. For years, the product remained dormant, and then in 2011, Ward finally showed signs of easing up, saying he would finally patent it. However, in May of 2011, he passed away without selling Starlight or sharing its properties and how it was made. Even though he said his family knew of the secret formula, to date, no one has come forward to demonstrate they did know. It seems the secrets of Starlight, how it was made and what it was made of, died forever with Maurice Ward. Number 1. Morgan Nick On June 9, 1995, six-year-old Morgan Nick went to a Little League baseball game with her mom in Alma, Arkansas. At around 10.30 p.m., the girl went out with two friends to capture lightning bugs. Even though her mother was hesitant, she eventually agreed to let her go. After they were done, her two friends saw Morgan emptying sand from her shoes standing close to her mother's car. As she was putting her shoes back on, her friends say a creepy man started talking to Morgan. Shortly after the game ended, her friends told Morgan's mom that she was by the car, but when her mother went out there, she couldn't find her daughter anywhere. One of the coaches spoke with the two children who last saw Morgan and they described seeing a man in a red pickup truck speaking to her. They immediately called 911 and then within minutes, a huge search was conducted to find the little girl. Apparently, several reports of attempted abductions of young girls were also reported in the area. A four-year-old girl was the victim of an attempted abduction in Alma the very same day Morgan disappeared. This girl screamed, alerting her mother, and then was rescued. Another attempted abduction occurred the following day when a nine-year-old girl from Fort Smith said a man tried to get her to go inside a men's restroom, but she resisted. This man was also reported to resemble Morgan's abductor. Police released a composite sketch of the possible suspect, hoping for some leads, but 
Nothing concrete ever came of it. A year after she disappeared, Morgan's mother Colleen launched the Morgan Nick Foundation. The nonprofit aims to assist families of missing children and have helped bring home several kids safely since. There have been several tips regarding Morgan's case, most recently in 2017 when her property was searched in relation to her disappearance. The same property had been searched before and it belonged to someone who was a person of interest since the initial investigation decades earlier. However, like before, nothing came of it. Morgan Nick was last seen wearing a green Girl Scout shirt, denim shorts, and white sneakers. She's a white Caucasian female with blue eyes and blonde hair and if she's still alive today would be 29 years old. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has released an age progression photo of her hoping that if she is still out there, someone may recognize her and come forward with information. So those were five strange and creepy unsolved mysteries. Answers to these mysteries are still being sought in many of the cases. Maybe one day we will eventually find them, and hopefully if we do, it happens sooner rather than later. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to our channel because we have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.